Magic Tree Elf Merlin Mission Stalia and by Starlight Chapter 3 Big Thinkers Ha ha, Jack laughed as if Annie were crazy. Don't pay attention to her, we are leaving now. Who are you? Who are you to defy? defy our teacher? A boy shouted. How dare a girl insult him? Another yelled. He shook his fist at him. Annie. She wasn't insulting anyone, said Jack, but don't worry, we're going. He took Annie's arm and started to pull her along. Stay, the teacher commanded. Jack and Annie froze. Tell me more, the man said. It is rare that I am surprised, and you have surprised me. What do you mean the earth is not the center of the universe? Well, said Annie, the earth is a planet, and all the planets in our solar system travel around the sun. The teacher smiled. Is that what you believe? He said. It's not just what I believe. It's what just I know. Said Annie, I tr- a trip around the sun takes a year. The student laughed. You were speaking nonsense, one said, and wasting our precious time with Aristotle. Aristotle thought Jack, he knew that name. His mind raced, trying to remember who Aristotle was. I'm just telling you the facts, said Annie, while the earth is circling the sun, you rotate. Rotate means it spun around. The one rotation of earth is one day. The boy snickered, but Aristotle was quiet. What a novel idea, he said softly. Then he turned to the boys. Our class is over for the day. I would like to speak these to these two visitors alone, the boys grumbled, but they tucked their tablets under their arms and headed out into the bright square. Aristotle stared at Jack and Annie. Who are you? Where are you from? He asked. I'm Annie. This is Jack, my brother, and um, we're from Frog Creek. Frog Creek? said Aristotle. It's the west of Greece, Jack said. And who are you? Jack and asked Annie. My name is Aristotle. I have come from uh, Athens. Athens, Greece, to teach philosophy and science in Macedonia. Jack asked. Now he remembered. Aristotle was the great philosopher and science scientist in ancient Greece. On the past time, past mission, they had delivered his writing to the ruler of Baghdad. We've heard of you, said Annie. You're the big thinker. You say. We save our writings once, but the camel ate them. She laughed. It wasn't funny at the time, but Annie said Jack. He shook his head. It would be possible to explain their trip to back back that that trip has had happened more than the south thousand years after this time in history. My sister had a big ne- imagination, he said. So we will see, see, said Aristotle. Her I- ideas about the universe was completely wrong, but of course, but I am astonished that she has a ther- theory. Why? asked Annie. I did not think that girls had the ability to think about such things, said a- Aristotle. And you look at Jack. He's kidding, right? She said. Jack laughed nervously. Well, no, he said. That's what people thought a long time ago. Scowling, Annie started to say something, but Aristotle smiled at her. You must be very special kind of girl. Come, let's, uh, let us talk, walk and talk. And you can show me that big thinkers you both are. Jack and Annie fell in, into steps with the philosopher as they started across the square. Besides completing the universe, what else you do think about? Aristotle asked Annie. Um, I think a lot about an animal. She said, wonderful. Animals always reveal to, reveal to us something natural and beautiful, said Aristotle. So you study them? I do study them. And he said, but more than that, I fall in love with them. I think that's the way I really learn. Ah, very good, said Aristotle. To truly educate your mind, you must also educate your heart. And where does your heart lead you, Jack? Do you prefer a life of sports, military, military training? Jack shook his head. I am I'm not 
super great at sports, he said, or military training, but I'm good at doing research. I think no son ever think. Jack found this surprisingly easy to talk with the philosopher. I love learning about the rainforest and the deep sea and the moon. I love learning about everything, really. Me, me too, said Annie. Indeed, said Aristotle, you both are remarkable. Jack shrugged. Not really. I guess we just kind of know ourselves. Know ourselves. So it will seem, Aristotle said, knowing yourself is the beginning of the old wisdom. The more Jack and, I, Jack and I learn about the world, the more we learn about ourselves, said Annie. We're always ty- trying new stuff. Yeah, even if we make fools of ourselves sometimes, said Jack, especially me. Aristotle chuckled. I think we should all dare to make fools of ourselves again and again, again and again. He said, anyone who fears looking at, looking like a fool must say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. So we will see, said Annie. May I ask, why have you come to Macedonia, said Aristotle. Does your, does your visit have a purpose? It does, said Jack with a laugh. He was enjoying talking to Aristotle so much that he'd forgotten their mission. Actually, we were looking for the Alexander the Great. Do you know him? asked Annie. I know the prince named Alexander, the son of the King Philip, said Aristotle. That's him, said Annie, but I must say I would not call him great yet, said Aristotle. He's own, he is only twelve years old. Twelve? said Jack. Yes, Alexander is the reason I, too, I too have come to Macedonia, said Aristotle. When the prince turns thirteen in few weeks, I will become his tutor. Why are you looking for him? We love to spend some time with him, said Annie. We heard he was, you know, great. Aristotle sighed. The prince would certainly wish you think so, he said. Well, if you want to meet him, King Philip is having a gathering at the royal house this afternoon. It is close by. Aristotle pointed to the mansion and uh, mansion on the hill above the square. The prince will be in attendance. Would you like to go with me? Yes, Jack and Annie said together. Good. Then let us climb the hill, said the philosopher, and he started up the pebble path that led to the royal house. Jack and Annie followed, grinning at each other. This is fantastic, Jack said softly. Maybe this, our mission will be easier than I thought. When they reached the top of the hill, Jack was, Jack was surprised by the pl- plainness of royal house. It looked like a big white box with tile roof and simple columns. Two guards in the crest, helmets stood like statues by the entrance. Each held a go- giant shield decorated with star. Please wait outside, said Aristotle. I must alert the king that I have brought guests to his gathering, and that one of them is girl. Why? asked Annie. No girls allowed? I fear females are never allowed to attend such events, said Aristotle. But I imagine the king has never met a girl girl like you before. Thanks, said Annie. I think. After Aristotle left, she turned to Jack. What is wrong with all the men in the history? Nearly everywhere I go, we go in the treehouse, girls aren't allowed to do any, any of the fun stuff. I know it's crazy, said Jack, but stay calm. Remember the king's fi- uh, ferocious. 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 ferocious fighter. Yeah, well, and how the perfect... We have magic that could make me a great fighter, too. She said, don't even think about it, said Jack, glancing at the guard. And he loud her fits. Aren't you surprised that Alexander, uh, Alexander's only 12? She said, at home he'd be just six, 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 six. Were sixth or seventh grader. I know. How great can he be? said Jack. He pulled out their book and looked up Alexander's childhood in the index. 
With his back to the guards, Jack raised in a soft voice. Young Alexander was raised in the man- manner of noble youth. From an early age, he received military training and became excellent swordsman, spear thrower, and chariot driver. He was the champion athlete and excelled in all sports. Oh man, said Jack. He sounds like a superman. Aristotle's back. It was spread honey. Jack slipped the book into his back. The king has granted this permission. Aristotle said, looking at Annie, "You may both come inside." Hooray! said Annie. Then she and Jack followed the philosopher into the royal house. Chapter Four: The One-Eyed King. The front hallway was dark and cool. The thick, flickering flames. Flames of oil lamps cast shadows on the wall murals. The mural showed figure, figures from Greek myth. Yes, and he whispered to Jack, pointing to a painting of the ruler of all the Greek gods. Centaurs, whispered Jack, pointing to creatures that were half man and half horse. This way. Said Aristotle. Jack and Annie followed the philosopher through the hall to an open courtyard. Women in long white dresses were grilling meat over a fire and pulling bread from the clay oven. The, they glanced at Annie with a curiosity. Aristotle led them past the cooks to the doorway of the courtyard. The sounds of loud conversation came from the room beyond. King Philip has gathered the men of his most elite cavalry," said Aristotle. "They are known as the king's companions. Do not be startled when you look upon the king. Years ago, he lost an eye in battle." "Ow!" said Annie, wincing. "Even so, he is still the greatest military leader in the known world," said Aristotle. Jack nodded. He took a deep breath. Prince Alexander will be arriving soon," said the philosopher. "Come." Then he led Jack and Annie into a spacious, lamp-lit room. The king's companions lay on the couches, propped up on their elbows or on pillow pillows. They were talking and eating. King Philip was on the couch dra- draped in purple silk. He had a black. Black patch over one eye. Two bodyguards with curved swords, hanging from their belts, stood nearby. When the king and his men caught sight of Jack and Annie and Aristotle, they fell silent. King Philip the Second of Macedonia, Aristotle said, bowing. Jack and Annie ba- bowed also. I have just met these two very learned young people today," said Aristotle. "There were Jack and his sister. Jack and his sister, Annie, a fabric a land west of Greece." "Hi," said Annie with a smile. Jack smiled too, as he looked around at the warriors. No one smiled back, including King Philip, the second of Macedonia. Sit," the king ordered. Jack and Annie sat together on an empty, empty couch. Aristotle sat nearby. The stray self servant quickly appeared. The king's companions resumed eating and talking as the servant removed Jack's sandals. She she raised his dust covered feet in a tub of warm water. Jack kept his eyes down, not sure what to do or say. Next, servants delivered small dishes of food to them. Jack identified olive tree cheese, purple grapes, nuts, figs, and then the, there was something that looked like dead bugs. Annie caught Jack's eye. Grasshoppers, she whispered, wrinkling her nose. Eat the grapes. He whispered back. Jack and Annie silently ate grapes. Grapes, as the king's companions feasted and talked with Aristotle and King Philip, the king was telling a story about the Salian that had been taken captive. Captive. Not until the dishes were cleared away, the King Philip turned 
turned his gaze on Jaganani. Silence, the king ordered his man. It's time now to hear from our esteemed visitors. Whomever Aristotle admires, I, I, I admire it also. Jack nearly choked on the grape. Aristotle tells us you have studied and learned much, both of you, the king said, looking at Nani. Is that true? Before Annie could answer, a boy burst into the room. He was a fair-haired and muscular. He wore a purple cloak over his tunic. He strode the center of the room, tossed back into his cloak, and bowed. I greet you all, the boy declared. At last I have arrived. Hey, oh, Prince Alexander, the man in the, the man sat in an eisen. Alexander the Great, Jack thought. Prince Alexander started to speak, but to Jack's surprise, the king snapped at him. Quiet, boy, sit down. The smile left the prince's face, but he obeyed and sat on the couch near his father. Aristotle leaned forward and sp- spoke kindly to Alexander. My prince, he said, when you entered, we were about to hear from two learned, two learned young people from Crockrick, a land west of Greece. They have come here especially to meet you. This is Jack and his sister, Annie. I see, said Alexander, puffing out his chest. He gave Jack and Annie a superior smile. Well then, small visitors, please share with us your great knowledge. Is this kid serious? Jack wondered. Who does he think it, he is? I'll share any pipe up. Recently, we <coughs> learned about all about a rare kind of bear called a panda bear. Panda bears, the prince with a smirk. Yes, but don't confuse pandas with other bears, like polar bears or grill- grizzly bears, said Annie. Pandas live in China. Polar bears live in the Arctic. That's right, said Jack, clearing his, th- his throat. They are very heavy polar bears, but they can move over thin sheets of ice. They balance their weight and slide on their paws. Like this, said Annie. She hauled out her arms and move as the as if she were sliding over ice. She laughed, and the king and his companions laughed with her. How wondrous, the king explained to the Aristotle. Yes, indeed, said the philosopher. The, the prince, though, looked bored. And then there are koala bears, said Jack. Enough about the bears, Alexander said rudely. Let's talk about the lion hunt I recently on. Not now, the king snapped. Look at Jack. I want to hear more about the bears. Jack cleared his throat. Actually, koala, bear, koala bears are not bears at all, he said. He was eager to show, uh, show off his knowledge in front of the prince. They're mas- marsupials. The kangaroo is a marsupial too. A can- kangaroo? Alexander said in a mocking voice, Marsupials? Kangaroos are, are as tall as the person, said Annie, but they can, but they hop like frogs. They can box too. Like this. Facing Alexander, she punched the air with her fist. The prince automatically ducked, making the King's companions laugh. The king's laugh loudest. How foolish she is, the prince growled. Quiet, Alexander, do not be angry, said his father. Go on, tell us more, he said to Jack and Annie. Do you honor the great gods as we do? I'm not sure what you mean by honor, said Annie, but we actually met Hercules in Pompeii. Pegasus save us at Greek Olympics. They are favorites of ours. The man looked confused. What? said the king. What I mean, Annie said quickly, is that we believe in the power of the imagination and the power of ancient stories. By reading about Hercules and Pegasus, we feel like we know them. Right, and these constellations, said Jack. So if you look at the stars in the night sky, you'll see that the sea. 
You'll see that the old stories were always with us. We're never alone. Jack glanced around the room. The king and his companions were smiling and nodding, and only the prince looked unhappy. Thank you, Jack. Those are wise words," said Aristotle. "Yes, indeed," said the king. "Aristotle, your f- young friends are truly amazing. Alexander, you will do well to learn from y- from these two. Learn what?" Alexander asked. "Can this boy mount a chariot moving at all?" At full speed, can he throw a spear farther than a grown man? Can he hunt lion? No, and he never will. And he said she smiled at the prince, but Jack, Jacks, but Jacks great at li- writing. So he takes notes and he writes his own stories. Ah, oh, ah!、Oh, said Alexander. He sprang to his feet. Forgive my rudeness," he said to Jack. "I would help. I would like to talk with you alone. Perhaps you can help me." "Uh oh," thought Jack. The prince looked at his father. "May we go?" "Please say no," thought Jack. Alexander made him nervous, but King Philip nodded. "We hate to lose your company," he said to Jack. "But it would be good for you to consult my son." "Yes, indeed. Come with me." Small visitors from Frog Creek said Alexander. "Be." Mackening to Jack and Annie, Jack glanced at Aristotle. The philosopher looked nervous too, but he smiled encouragingly and nod, nodded, as if to say, "Be brave. They are again to make fools of yourself." Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.